Hi. In their published works, two different scientists, Tom Garrison and Michael Allaby, both compare mountains to ships. Yes, you heard me. Mountains, those tall, massive structures that protrude out of the earth in such a stately, solid way, and ships sailing in the open water. Sounds like an odd coupling, but the physical law of buoyancy developed by the Greek mathematician and inventor Archimedes would say otherwise. This is because the driving force behind both ships and mountains is one and the same, and it's something called buoyancy. Now, the words buoyant or floating don't usually pop into our heads when we think of mountains. But guess what happens to a mountain when a thick sheet of ice accumulates on its surface? The rock sinks into the mantle under its weight, just as a ship sinks deeper into the water when it's loaded with cargo. And what happens to the mountain when it erodes or after the removal of the thick sheet of ice from its surface? In much the same way as a ship rises again when the cargo is removed from it, the Earth's crust will rise again in response to the reduced load on the mountain. We know all this today from the research conducted by scientists such as Garrison and Allaby in 2013 and 14. But flashback 14 centuries ago to when the Quran was revealed, and you'll find that it too makes the same analogy in chapter 42, verse 32, when it says, And among his signs are the ships in the sea like mountains. How in the world could a book revealed that long ago possibly contain such accurate scientific analogies in the glaring absence of the necessary scientific tools and proofs at that time? So who says science and religion have to be at odds? In the Quran, science and religion are twin sisters, and I don't mean the type of twins that keep saying they're identical when everyone really knows they're fraternal. The Quran contains many passages that were not understood by scientists, let alone regular people, until recently, and some that science still has not fully deciphered. But this should come as no surprise. In fact, the Quran itself tells us that this will happen when it says, and these similes we put forward for mankind, but none will understand them except those who have knowledge. Let's look at that word a little closer now, simile. It's very fitting that the Quran should use that word, seeing as how the book itself often uses similes and analogies to help explain things that might otherwise seem abstract or unrelated to us. But what's even more astonishing then, that is modern scientists have used some of the exact same analogies that were first written in the Quran over 1400 years ago. Don't share. This is one of the most dangerous channels going around.